watch and the heat is on again today with potentially dangerous conditions in the forecast. We're joined now by New York City Emergency Management Commissioner Zach Iskell to talk more about how the city is preparing. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Cindy. How are you doing today? Doing pretty well, but boy, is it going to be hot. This is the first excessive heat warning for New York City since 2021. How dangerous is this heat event? Yes, yeah, so heat is one of the more deadly of the weather events that we face in New York City. Uh, we lose, you know, sometimes up to 370 New Yorkers a year to heat and heat related illnesses. So it is really important that all of us take this very, very seriously. Both the city is preparing for it, but also making sure that everyday New Yorkers are doing their part to help us and also to prepare themselves and their loved ones. So for people who need shelter, where can they find it? And is seeking a cooling center the best decision? Yeah, so first off, if, if you have AC, um, if you live in a cool place, always best to stay home, especially during the high heat times of day, usually about 12 to 8 p.m. Um, but then you can go to a cooling center. Um, cooling centers are, are places like libraries, uh, sister agencies, um, other places that you can go to to stay cool. You can also just go to a coffee shop, go take in a movie. Um, but we always recommend that people go to our website, uh, www.nyc.gov backslash beat the heat. You can also call 311 to find out what time cooling centers in your neighborhood or near you are open because their hours do vary. We don't want you going out in the heat and showing up at some place that might not be open uh, for whatever reason. Commissioner, do you have a feel for how prepared Con Ed is for something like this? Yeah, so we are in constant communication with Con Ed. In fact, we have somebody that is stationed in their emergency response center uh, as they activate it for events like this. They're also part of all of our meetings with the National Weather Service, with all of the interagency partners, and the city starts preparing for these events days in advance. Con Ed is an integral partner. I'm very close to, uh, to their president. He and I are in constant communication as well throughout these types of events, and then just generally throughout the year, because a lot of the prep for heat, for other types of weather, seasonal events, happens months in advance. How, uh, do people need to conserve resources at this point? Yeah, it's a great question. So one of the things that I really recommend everybody does is, is, is make sure that you are subscribed to Notify NYC. This is the city's public communication uh, system, right? We put out emergency alerts, we put out guidance, information that people need, available in 14 languages, also American Sign Language. You can sign up at nyc.gov backslash notify. You can sign up by calling 311. You can sign up by downloading the app in the App Store. But through that app, we will put out information about things you can do to help the city. So for example, one of those things is set your thermometer to 78 degrees. You know, try not to do laundry or, you know, uh, turn the lights off during the day, especially the, during that 12 to 8 p.m. period. And then there's other things you can do. You know, a lot of people will open up fire hydrants during high heat. Uh, don't do that, but you can go to the fire department, you know, your local firehouse, you can get a spray cap, they can put it on that conserves water. That doesn't uh, dilute the water pressure so that the fire department can continue to fight fires while also enabling you to, you know, have some fun in the streets. Um, Commissioner, what's the city doing to protect the unsheltered, vulnerable populations who live in the city? Yeah. So during these types of emergencies, we generally have three objectives, you know, protect utilities and transportation, public messaging. And then one of the most important ones is always, what are we doing to protect our city's most vulnerable? So for our homeless or unhoused population, you know, we have uh, worked very closely with Department of Social Services. They execute something called a code red, where they have enhanced outreach teams going out, making sure people are hydrated, getting them to cooling centers, getting them onto MTA buses, They've been doing that 24-7 uh, during this period, trying to, they go to specific locations where they know people congregate during these types of high heat events and then doing everything they can to get people off the streets. The other thing that we do is, is there's other vulnerable populations, you know, our elderly uh, immigrants, you know, our delivery workers um, and uh, people with disabilities and functional needs. And so we work very closely with those sister agencies uh, Department for the Aging, Mayor's Office for Immigrant Affairs, uh, Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, to make sure we're giving people the information that they need and um, and making sure that they are also protected. And, and one thing I also encourage anybody with especially life-saving equipment at home to do, make sure you have that registered with Con Ed. It's one of the first things we look at when we're seeing uh, you know voltage reductions or when we might go to a blackout or have power outages is who are the people that we need to be most concerned about in that community that we might need to support or try and find workarounds for. 
Zach Iskell, New York City Emergency Management Commissioner. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you both. Great to see you guys. Thank you. Now, as this heat wave continues, stay with CBS2 for the latest conditions and impacts. We'll bring you the latest forecast on air and on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.